Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we are supporting our friend Allie who runs the Let's Talk Scream account and she has her own YouTube channel and I'm gonna put a link to both of those down below. So make sure you support Allie, check out her stuff. She's an awesome person. And uh, you know, obviously she took uh, this hit really hard uh, as did a lot of the people in the symbiote community of fans, the parasites out there and you know, Venom Maniacs or whatever group you, you're a part of. Um, I know a lot of you guys hated hearing the fact that this Scream book got canceled. And so Allie came up with this idea to, you know, support the book next week. So the week I'm recording this, it's like my day off today and I have a long weekend of work coming up. So I don't know what I'll be able to film and what other things I can get done, but I wanted to make sure I got this done just so I at least had one video up next week for Allie and I'll try to record the other ones, you know, this weekend or early next week or something like that. So in this episode, we're going to support Allie by talking about Scream number one and two because Allie wanted to bring more awareness for the graphic novel of Scream, which comes out next Wednesday. So uh, if you're, you know, haven't checked out the book yet, please go pick up the trade paperback from Marvel. I think it's like $15.99 or $16.99. It's, it's pretty cheap. You get the first five issues in it and, uh, and you know, it's a good series, man. Like, I feel really bad. I read the first issue. I was like, hey, this is pretty good, but I'm going to wait for the trade before I, you know, keep collecting and, and, uh, and I'll discuss it at the time when the trade comes out. Little did I know we were going to face a pandemic and go through all this, this stuff that we've been going through. And then that led to the book being canceled. You know, somewhat sales, like Clay Chapman, the writer of the book, said it was kind of sales related, but it was mostly just the pandemic itself and screwing with the release schedule and everything like that. So, you know, whatever happens, I hope they get to bring, you know, a Clay Chapman back. He's the writer of this book or uh, Gary Brown and uh, Chris Mooneyham, I think the artist of the book. I hope they get to come back and maybe do like a web of venom scream demogoblin versus demogoblin one shot or something uh, just to kind of wrap up their story because they ended on issue six which was a kind of a standalone issue but it did set up like another arc with you know uh scream versus demogoblin so hopefully that story still gets told at some point and if it's in a like a 48 page one shot called web of venom you know scream or web of venom demogoblin or whatever I would love that and hopefully they bring this creative team back and let them finish and i think there was a different artist that was going to draw um you know the 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 next arc so you know it, it would have been nice to see all that and maybe it was gary brown i can't remember but um the book was is is a great book actually actually i like it more than the venom book now granted it's only five issues in but i would say if i put this first five issues or six issues uh against donny cates's first six issues of venom I actually think this is a stronger start for a character. Um, I, I honestly just I, it has cosmic ties to it, which is what Donnie wanted to do in his first run. He wanted to introduce the Grendel and and Rex and kind of plant all these seeds for these world building things that he ended up doing. I think Clay Chapman's doing that here with this book, but just doing a little bit better. So what we're going to talk about today, and we're going to get into some spoilers. We're going to discuss Scream number one and two. And again, we're doing this to support the Scream book that got canceled because we hope that people will go out and buy the trade paperback and support the trade paperback. And if that sells well enough, maybe these, you know, this writer and these artists can come back and tell one more story to wrap up their arc. I hope, you know, that's the hope anyway. So please, you know, if you like what you hear in this episode where we talk about the first two issues, if you like this, go buy the graphic novel and read the rest. Don't watch the, because I'll, I'll make more videos. I'll, I'll do issues four and five in a video and then, uh, or issues, I'm sorry, three and four in one video and then issues five and six in a third video. So this will be a three-part series where we talk about Scream to promote the graphic novel and they'll be coming out, like this one will probably come out maybe next Wednesday or Thursday, hopefully. I can, you know, get it up on the day the graphic novel comes out. That'd be great if I could, but I think I work next Wednesday, so I don't know if I can yet. Um, so, yeah, we're gonna we're just gonna do this and put videos up every couple days for a week. So I'll have this video go up maybe next Wednesday or Thursday, and then part two go up like Saturday or Sunday, and then part three go up like Monday or Tuesday. That way, it's the whole week, the first week that the graphic novel's out there. And hope hopefully you guys who watch this video, you guys and girls who are out there, you parasites and everything, go pick this book up. If you haven't read the single issues, go support the graphic novel. It's less than twenty bucks. You get the first five issues in it. And it's good. And here, you know, we're going to dive into how good it is. Uh, the first issue is pretty neat because obviously it's it's the world building issue. It's like, all right, here's our pilot episode. And actually, unlike a lot of pilots, Clay Chapman does a good job setting up all the elements um, that are needed and, you know, for the rest of this story. Like, actually, this is a really solid first issue. The art is good. It introduces these two cops at the beginning who are going to play a part later on. So 
building a, you know, um, supporting cast, which is always good for, for characters. Um, I feel like Eddie has now, after like 20 issues or so, gotten a, a better uh, supporting cast, but it's mainly just existing Marvel characters that we already know about. Andy's a little different. They actually bring in a lot of new characters, like these two police officers, uh, but then they also bring in Aunt May. And Andy, she's homeless. She's in New York now after the big attack from, you know, from Carnage and Absolute Carnage. She got stuck here in New York, and uh, and so she or not here. I don't live in New York, but she got stuck in New York, and she wants to. Um, you know, she has to live in homeless shelters and or stay at homeless shelters. And one of the shelters she stays at is Feast, where Aunt May works. And and so that was really cool. Actually, I really like that Aunt May is a, a supporting character in Andy's book because what Aunt May is really good at is she's really good at uh, being a support system. She's she's a like a unconditional love. Um, in a lot of ways. And we talked, I talked to J.M. Demetrius about Aunt May recently and in our conversation, he had a revelation about her when I told him how I felt about the character and what, you know, she's capable of. And he was like, you know, I never thought of that actually. And that made me feel so good to talk to a writer that has inspired me for so many years and, and kind of shine a light on a character that he, um, you know, never looked at in that way and was like, wow, yeah, she is kind of uh, the glue in a, a different way than I thought she was the glue for these characters, for Peter Parker and stuff. So to see her used here and be kind of the, the, the rock or the glue in Andy's life now is pretty awesome. And she opens up to Andy and, you know, she talks to Andy and it's like, wow, there's this teenager with abilities and now Aunt May is is helping them. It's like, how awesome is that? It's, it's you know, full circle. It's like, a, it's kind of her purpose in life is to guide heroes in a lot of ways. And uh, and that's fantastic that she gets to do that again here with Andy. So I really like that, uh, you know, that they bring in Aunt May. Um, the cops find this dead body. It's a woman's body who is like mutated. She kind of like has fish parts, you know, and stuff. She was found, I think, in the Hudson or something like that. And so they're like, yeah, we got to, you know, they found the body they're like oh a fisherman found her and he thought he caught a giant fish and when he pulled her out she was still alive and she was like flopping around and she's like half fish half person not like a mermaid but like a real mutation you know and uh, hopefully the image popped up there on screen and she's uh you know she's just it was gross and so the cops even were like oh i'm gonna have nightmares over this like this is horrifying to look at so that's the threat is that they build up through this issue is that there's something underwater like you know I don't know if it's in the Hudson or which river it is outside New York but um, it's there's something at the bottom and there's like a sunken ship and there's all these dead bodies and uh, and they're all being resurrected uh, by something that is symbiote esque but but not really and, it's, and it kind of looks like it merged with underwater life. Uh, forms so like algae and stuff like that it's kind of made this new form so it's uh it's it's pretty neat that this thing is building and while that's happening andy like i said she's at feast and she runs into like this homeless woman named agnes who tries to stab andy because she's laying in you know her bed she's like hey that's my bed and andy's like i'm sorry i'm new here and agnes like get out of my bed and she like takes a knife and she tries to stab andy and she sees that andy is symbiote like you know because the the symbiote comes out of andy's hand and protects her from being stabbed luckily no one else saw it but it, it freaked agnes out so she was like i'm not staying here and she leaves and that plays a part later because i think in issue two um this underwater creature it starts to send out parasites uh like these slugs that like go down the throat of people and then this creature at the bottom of the ocean can now control them and turn them into you know fish people i guess or mutated people and and so agnes gets mutated in the second issue and she comes back to try to hurt andy again and outs her as scream and then uh, in front of aunt may so that you know then now you have aunt may is looking at this kid who has this venom type ability and you know obviously aunt may knows all about that kind of stuff you know so she's a little freaked out by that but she still wants to help andy which is so aunt may right <laughs> so um, there's a lot of great character stuff in this. That's what I noticed the most is that, uh, you know, what Donny Cates did in his first five or six issues of Venom was it was a lot of setup. It was like, oh, we got to set up the Grendel. We got to set up this, that. We're going to bring in Miles for just like a, you know, an, a, a random encounter kind of. Um, but, uh, you know, we're going to introduce Rex and that's going to set up the Vietnam stuff that we do later. This didn't feel like that. This was like, all right, we're setting stuff up, but it's going to pay off sooner than later and we're also going to have um you know these great interactions between characters and i just and there wasn't like a lot of you know like obviously there's a lot of suspension of disbelief when you read comic books so 
Typically, I don't look for logic in things like, like obviously it's a person with an alien symbiote on them. So right away, you're like, no, this is, there's no realism in this. But where I look for logic is in things like, why does the character do this? Like, why, why is their reaction to something this? And if it's explained in the story, then it helps me continue to suspend disbelief because the, the, the human moments are at least feel real. And then the rest of the stuff can be as crazy as it wants. And there's that fine line you can walk. And I feel like, you know, Donnie doesn't really walk that line. He just kind of does whatever he wants and whatever is kind of convenient for the story sometimes. And I feel like Clay Chapman is is kind of like, no, what makes sense for the characters? Like, what makes them tick? Where What do they want most in life? Uh, what do they want most out of their day? And let's address that. And so that's what we have. So we have Andy who has basically been abandoned. Like, you know, Eddie's not around. He's on Venom Island at this point. So she's kind of alone in New York. She doesn't have anyone to go to. Obviously the Venom symbiote is Scream's father. Uh, so there's that kind of like abandonment issue that the suit is feeling. Um, they, you know, Andy misses Flash and she's like, well, if Flash was Venom right now, he would know what to do. And, you know, instead of Eddie, who's kind of an idiot <laughs> on some level. Um, and so she's she's lost and she's looking for connections. And so when she finds it in Aunt May, I kind of like that because Andy's also looking for a mother, you know, like not really looking for her mother, although she is kind of uh, as well. They have flashbacks about, her, you know, Andy and her dad, who is now passed away, has been killed. Um, so now she really is on her own. So she's like, I lost my dad. Screams like, well, my dad abandoned me. So they have that connection. So the uh, theme of abandonment that's with Eddie a lot of times uh, when he's Venom, that's true. And in, in here in these first two issues. And then there's also the, you know, the, um, you know, her looking for her family like she's you know she wants to make a family and family is a theme that's also part of eddie's story especially now with uh, dylan and stuff like that so i like that clay chapman's like let's take the two major themes that are going on with venom abandonment and family and let's put that in this book with andy and it fits because it's you know andy is alone and so uh so this sea creature at the end of the first issue actually disguises itself to look like Andy's mom or what, you know, what it thinks Andy's mom might look like today because Andy's mom left when she was a little girl and she never knew why. And her dad just said, well, there's something missing in your mom. And she went to find it. And so he kept it really vague. So we don't know if she was like, you know, like, you know Daredevil's mom, like a drug addict or anything like that. Like, we don't know what her story is really. But I thought, well, wow, that's still intriguing because you can build on that and you can have the theme of family and mother. And that plays into the role of the villain because in the second issue, after Andy realizes that it's not really her, mo her mother, uh, and you know it's the fish creature in disguise and pre pretending to be her mother, she fights back, and all these other creatures show up, and she fights them, and you know they get into a big tussle, and then that's when um, they cut to the villain of the story. So as these creatures are being killed by Andy and sent back, and as like Agnes who tried to kill Andy gets defeated and the, the parasite in her goes back, and Andy even doesn't try to just kill everyone. She does when they're fully mutated because she's like they're gone there's no way we can save these people but at feast uh, she gets attacked by a guy who is still human looking so she actually holds him up and she is able to like extract the parasite from his mouth and you know cause him to live you know and be human still so I like that I like that there's a part of her that's fully aware of saving people too and what I also like that they build up in this is the voice in her head uh, because she knows that Patricia Robertson sacrificed herself and that, that um, Donna Diego's memories are still somewhere inside Scream. And then you have the Scream suit itself. So all of those voices at first are just like blurry noise to Andy and she's trying to shut it out. But as the book progressed in issue one, the voices become more clear and she's starting to hear them more and more again and stuff. And I was like, that's awesome. Like what a great slow evolution but over the course of an issue so by issue two she's actually communicating with the other voices in her head so i loved all that i thought all that stuff was really great and and done very very well and again enhanced by the artwork like i thought the artwork never i don't know if i've seen chris mooneyhan's uh, art before or gary brown's but it's good like when they work on these books it's really good i think gary brown comes in and like draws some of the pages from issue two so um and i think maybe did the flashback pages so that's like the main last thing I'll talk about here is they showed the mother so mother is like the villain at the bottom of the ocean that is symbiote like that merged with all these fish and in the second issue they kind of reveal her connection to Null and they show Null at the beginning of time it says like pre-existence or something like that on the on the image 
and he's like sitting on his throne. He's got his red sword and he opens his hand and he kind of says, uh, you know, like, go forth, my children. And a black, like, dragon type thing comes out and a red dragon type thing, which is pretty neat because obviously Venom and Carnage, like, it's like a, a nod to that in a way too. But it shows on Earth two Grendels. It shows a, a black Grendel and a red Grendel. And that's pretty neat to me, actually. Uh, and actually, on a biblical sense, that's kind of neat to me because I, if I'm not mistaken, there's this story um, about Noah, um, you know, after the ark and stuff, about finding land. And he has like, um, a, I think like a crow and a, a dove or something. And so it's like a black bird and a white bird and sends them out into the, you know, into the mist of because they're out in the ocean after the flood and it's like all right whatever bird comes back with a twig that's the direction you know land is in and we'll move towards land um that is what this reminded me of it's like no like doing this and these two bird dragon things come out and go towards you know the the cosmos and they end up on earth and you have a black dragon and a red dragon and it looks like that's who this mother might be so i haven't i didn't read past issue three yet like i've read them once already but it was a little bit like i was like over a month and a half ago or two months ago so i'm i don't fully remember everything so i'll get there um but uh but yeah it seems like that this mother person, this mother creature that's at the bottom of the ocean that tricked Andy and all this other stuff um, and is sending creatures after Andy, she's intrigued by Andy. She thinks, she looks at uh, Scream as like a version of herself. Okay, she's, you know, it's kind of artificially created um, or it's created in a way that most symbiotes aren't. So it's like, you know, the Life Foundation symbiotes were seeds that were pulled from venom and forced to grow. So it, there's a little bit of unnaturalness to their birth. And so that reminds, you know, uh, you know, this mother character of her, she sees Scream as this unnatural birth. It's like, well, I was kind of created just on a, you know, out of, you know, Noel's hand basically and sent here um, to conquer. And somehow I ended up down here at the bottom of the ocean and, and kind of washed up into this river over time. And now that all these bodies have been dumped down here from, you know, whatever event that happened, wherever that boat sank came from, I, I, you know, again, I got to read more to learn more of the backstory. But, uh, but this mother has now been resurrected. So at the end of the second issue, she's kind of sitting there on her throne underwater and she's like, uh, you know, I am mother or whatever. So, um, so it's pretty neat because so first issue ends with, uh, you know, the creature disguising itself as Andy's mother and giving her a hug. And then the second issue ends with her sitting in her true form as this red being with this like weird white face. Uh, like almost like a kabuki mask in a way, but it's like part of her face. Um, and she's sitting on a throne addressing herself as mother. So I'm like, all right. So, you know, a little bit nail on the head with the theme uh, to an extent, but not to a point where it bothered me. Like, uh, you know, I was like, ah, I noticed it, but this was just really good buildup. And I'm actually really excited to read issues three and four again. And I'll definitely bring that episode to you guys. Uh, you know, well, by the time this goes up, maybe a couple days after that, uh, hopefully I'll, you know, I'll be able to record it, uh, you know, another episode of this, like over the weekend or something like that. And I'll try to get it up to you guys next weekend. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, you know, let me know what you think. Have you read Scream 1 and 2? These were just some of my, you know, favorite moments about it. I like talking about this series and I, you know, at least the first two issues. And I'm excited to talk about the next two issues and then the final two issues because, you know, this was something really cool. Like, I think there was a lot of real good character stuff here, good buildup, good artwork. And it was by people whose names aren't like rock star names, but I feel like they might be one day soon because quality writing, quality artwork, um, it's a quality book. And it's a real shame that it's gone. And I don't mean to like when I was comparing, uh, you know, Clay to Donnie, it wasn't to put Donnie down or anything. It was, it was just really kind of to, to, to tell you like how much, or how I felt about reading this as far as like a setup to a character. Uh, this was just done really, really well. And it has the cosmic stuff in there because in issue two, they already mentioned Noel. And so it's already has that big feel where it's like, okay, this threat, this mother character, it's it's a cosmic thing. It's it's another Grendel possibly. Like, you know, again, I'm gonna keep reading to find out exactly what it is, but uh, but it just has these, this big feel to it while also being grounded street level storytelling with personal stakes and, uh, and you know, kind of personal growth. Um, and great character moments. So it has a it has a lot in it, and it's it's really good. So if you get a chance, if you like this episode, you heard me talk about it now for 20 minutes, go pick up Scream, the graphic novel. It's really, really good. Um, and again, I'm gonna, I, I, I remember it being good. Like I remember it being really good, but I don't remember some of the beats. So that's why I gotta reread it. 
but trust me, it's good. And Allie, I, you know, I know you're out there, hopefully watching this video, may, hopefully made it to the end. Um, you're an awesome person, and I hope that something comes out that will help you continue to make content on, uh, on this character, Scream especially, um, but hopefully there's some other great characters out there in the Marvel or DC universe that maybe you will, uh, t you know, kind of take a liking to. Um, and so, uh, and that's what I urge everybody. Like, I just lost Ghost Rider recently, and I'm really bummed about that because like this series, I thought it was a great character stuff, great buildup. I wanted to see where it was going, and then it's gone now. And so, uh, so yeah, I mean, Marvel's clearly going through something major right now, and they have a lot going on. And they're not being as public about it, um, which makes sense because they're owned by Disney. So I, I feel like some of this would be done behind the scenes. But it just, to me, I'm like, whatever the reason is, it sucks for us fans who were trying to support these characters that haven't gotten ongoing series before or in a long time, like Ghost Rider. It's, it's great to support these characters again, but it sucks that they don't, you know, they don't have the support of the company uh, to an extent. And I understand there's business reasons for it and other things, but still, like, these are really quality books. So hopefully these quality creators of these books get to go on and do other great things and uh, and still at some point, someday, touch on these stories again and give us the conclusions that um, that we want because uh, because we are loving what they've been doing. So, yes, please go get Scream. The graphic novel's out today. Um, you know, as I'll try to put this up today. If it's Wednesday, when you're seeing this of, of next week, then it's out today. If it's Thursday, it's also out today, but it just didn't come out today. It came out yesterday. But uh, but it's out now, so go get it. Like, go buy Scream, Curse of Carnage. Uh, it's volume one. I think it's probably the only one. I don't know where they're going to stick issue six and what trade they'll stick it in, but hopefully they'll put that somewhere because that was a good issue too. So go get the trade and then buy issue six, uh, you know, in single issue form if they have it at your local comic store or find it on eBay or just, you know, buy it on Comixology. Like, you know, find it somewhere and read all these issues today because they're awesome. And we'll get into uh, issues three through six coming up very, very soon. So I've talked about long enough about this. So thank you guys so much. Um, I got to get back to doing other things here. I got to make a couple other videos and uh, I got to get ready for work tomorrow. And so I'm glad I did all this where the sunlight was still out. It's nice. And, uh, and next time, you know, I'll try to record more videos at night so you can see the purple lights and you can see the background better. I'll adjust the camera. I'll mess with it a little bit. Um, I'll, 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 maybe I'll shave and clean my hair up a little bit. I'll do something. I'll try to uh, be more, I'll be better with presentation very soon. I got a lot to work on. So thank you guys so much. As always, I appreciate it. Let your comments be known down below. And uh, and like I said, go to those links down below. Follow Allie on Twitter and on YouTube. Subscribe to her. She's an awesome person. And hopefully we get more screen content so that Allie, you know, has more content to make too. So thank you guys so much. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.